Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Um, now we're moving to Ondo State and we're having a conversation on security. The governor of the state, Rotimi Akiridulu, yesterday put out a message and, of course, a notice to all headsmen in the state and asking, of course, that they vacate Ondo State and the forest reserves. Um, of course, uh, speaking mostly on the security challenges that had been noticed in the state and the increase in the kidnapping and other crimes that had uh, been noticed in Ondo State. He said that there might be certain elements masquerading as headsmen to carry out these crimes. And so, of course, uh, we're quickly having a conversation about that this morning. We've uh, invited to join us uh, the special advisor to the Undo State Governor on Security, Mr. Jimo Dojumo. Uh, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for your time this morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, we also have a security expert, uh, Dixon Osaji. Thank you for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dujumo. I, I, I want to get, you know, from the horse's mouth, what exactly is going on in Undo State and uh, what may have led to the governor taking these steps? Uh, the truth is clear. Uh, recently, you can see that we are facing a very serious uh, security challenges here in Undo State particularly this issue of kidnapping, and traits to a particular uh, uh, tribe, which we know that the problem now is that uh, we have to come, we, we, we call a stakeholder meeting to address the issue. It was there, the governor made it clear that we just have to live to, in harmony. Sincerely, we have to live like brothers if, if, we, if, if we like it. But the situation we are, one, we keep on kidnapping each other, creating problems, causing a lot of crisis here and there. We have to talk, so that's why their leaders, we invited them, and we have to read the riot act that uh, we are no cowards, we can equally defend ourselves. And enough of this uh, issue of picking our people, demanding ransom, torturing them, raping them, doing a lot of things on them. So, so, well, so that's help, where we are now. Help us to be clear on what exactly is going on. The statement by the governor says that there are elements masquerading as headsmen to carry out these crimes. And, and so, is that exactly the way it is? Or, you know, is it actually the headsmen? You know, we are on telephone conversation. You are not very clear at my end, yeah? So I want you to come up clearly to enable me to give an appropriate okay. answer to All what right. so, you are asking me. Okay, so this is what I'm asking. The, the statement by the governor, Rotimi Akiridulu, says that it is certain elements that are masking and masquerading as headsmen to carry out these crimes. Um, so I, I want you to you know, help us understand what that means. Is it the headsmen themselves or are there criminal elements you know, that might be making the headsmen look bad? I want to tell you something. The, what I want you to get right is that this crime are traced to a particular uh, 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 set of people that we know. Each, because the, the kidnapping is incessant, and uh, the people kidnapped, they know the, 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 when, they are in, when they are in their custody, they know the language they are spoken, they know the language spoken, and it's not, they don't speak any other thing. As, even from their type of mode of dressing, and other, you know the type of people that have actually kidnapped you. So, this is what, intelligently, this is what we are working on. All right. So, All right. and at the same time, we have to at least call ourselves to the round table, talk about it, and let us put a stop to this uh, uh, act of uh, terrorism on our people here. Because if anybody will have to come and stay with you as a tenant, <laughs> there must be rule and regulation. They must have to live with you in harmony. That's what we are saying here. 
Okay, let's, uh, let's bring in uh, Mr. Dixon Osage into this issue. I mean, over, all over the news, you hear cases every day of suspected headsmen attacking innocent people, attacking even the recently constituted Amoteco Corps members. You know, now the government, the governor has said that uh, they want to tackle this by giving an ultimatum for all headsmen to leave within seven days. From a security angle, Mr. Osage, would this work? Uh, sincerely, I'm having one problem with your, with our, this our communication. You are not completely very clear to me here. No, I'm talking and, to you. Uh, and if, if I've gotten your, if, if, I, if I'm able to get you clearly, I'm able to give an appropriate answer to your okay. questions. Okay, okay. Mr. hold Mr. on, Mr. Dojumo. Can you come in short? Just be very short with your question because okay. you are not very clear here. Okay, okay. Mr. Dojumo, could you kindly just hold on? Uh, Mr. Osaji, can you hear me? I'm here in the call. Oh, yes, oh, I can hear you. Okay. Mr. Osage, this question goes to you. I am saying, do you think from a security angle that this ultimatum that Governor Rotimi Akeridulu has given for herdsmen to leave the forest and leave Ondo State within seven days, do you think this is a solution to the kidnapping issue in Ondo State? There was no... no there, let, let us get something clear. He did not give any clear instruction that ice men should live on those for seven days. Don't let let don't let us mix things up. Uh, where, where I was in the, have... excuse me, I was in the meeting. What he said was that okay. we should stop night grazing. Night grazing is banned. Under air grazing is banned. Then people should stop grazing along the uh, expressway. Okay. Hold and on, this Mr. bucket break break it. Mr. If they have come to, 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 to grace, they should go go to grace in the bush and not in people's farm, farmland. Okay, hold on. That's Mr. what we are saying. Mr. Dojima, kindly hold on. Um, kindly huh? hold on. We, we they should find another... an alternative means of feeding their cows. We understand that. Mr. Dojima, please not hold on. Not feeding on people because the Can other people who are clearly, equally... Their the, the, the farm crops, excuse me, their farm crops are their means of livelihood. Why the cows are the means of livelihood of those people rearing cows? All right. That's what he's saying. Okay, hold on, hold on, please. If you can, if you can hear us, we, we we have a second guest that we're also trying to you know get to speak. And unfortunately, I think he has disconnected now. But to clarify, the official Twitter handle of Governor Rotimi Akere Delu says here, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, "All forest reserves in the state." are to be vacated by headsmen within the next seven days, with effect from today, Monday, 18th, January 2021. It also says yes. night grazing is banned with immediate effect because most farm destruction takes place at night. So yes. can, you, can you help us understand? Because you are saying that there's nothing like a seven-day ultimatum, but the official Twitter handle of is, the governor. There is ultimatum. For night grazing, stop. There is ban on night grazing. It was in the night that people used to go to people's farm and start destroying their farm crops. That is one. Then under air grazing, you cannot imagine a situation where a boy of about seven, eight years is rearing cow, grazing cow, a number, a herd of cows of about 20, 30. How will he be able to control it? So this is what, part of the problem we, we, we actually identify. So that is why uh, under egg grazing, night grazing, totally banned in those states. Then grazing on the highways, that is where, where look at what happened at Oshu, which I don't want to start relating here. So we should stop great on the highway that apart from uh, that he may metamorphose to kidnapping at the same time we have to be careful it can cause accidents all right mr Dejima, can you so, so hold just, on uh, we're trying to get our second guest back online and we'll be back after the short break to stay with us on the breakfast
You're welcome back to the conversation on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. If you're just joining us, we have with us the special advisor to the governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akiridulu, on security matters, uh, Mr. Jimo Dujimo. Also, we have security experts, Dixie Musaje. And we've been analyzing the issue in Ondo State, the uh, seven-day ultimatum that the governor has given to all headsmen to leave the state or register if they want to continue their farming operations. So, uh, Mr. Osage, just before we went on that break, I was asking you to, about your opinion. If this ultimatum Governor Akeridulu has given is what will solve the problem of kidnapping in Ondo State. All right, thank you very much uh, for having me. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I think I, I heard about uh, the decision of the uh, Governor of uh, Ondo State. And uh, I, I would like to uh, uh, put in my own light to those uh, to that decision. Uh, for me, I think the governor uh, is trying to uh, secure the lives and properties of the citizens and people of Ondo State. And actually, to be very honest, uh, he is not far from the truth, or uh, I would say he has not taken any departure from the normal. Uh, first of all, uh, before we uh, look into the analysis or the reasons why the governor uh, gave that decision, uh, we need to know what went wrong uh, in Ondo State. Uh, what are the security challenges? Uh, one of the security challenges in Ondo State uh, are kidnapping, terrorism, uh, destruction of uh, farmers' uh, uh, cro uh, crops. Now, uh, who are the perpetrators of these uh, 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 activities? It is likened uh, to grazing. It is also likened uh, to Fulani headsmen uh, who uh, carry their cows around the, the uh, government space. Now, we need to look at your government space, Anita. Uh, your government space uh, can be likened to state weakness. Uh, your government space offers multiple benefits to a uh, terrorist group. Your government space offers provision for safe heavens for criminals and terrorists. Your government space also gives terrorists the opportunity to plan, train, indoctrinate, and secure access to weapons and equipment. Your government space also creates room for illegal smuggling to generate income. Now, having, looking at this, having looked at these characteristics, would you ask me if the decision of the governor is accurate? I would say a big yes, because the government space is not a place where we have the uh, police presence. We don't have the military presence. We don't have police posts. What are you doing in the forest? Now, if you remain in the forest, you are a threat to the state. You are a threat to the society, because nobody is checkmating your activities. I am not going to say, uh, the only uh, point I'm going to say uh, the governor went wrong was to specify that headsmen should leave uh, their government space, should leave the forest. Are you telling me it's only the headsmen are, are in the forest? I would say no. So the governor would have come and say the headsmen or anyone occupying their government space, occupying our, 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 our forest, should vacate their environment. All this right, is leave room Sanjay. for us not to think that... Uh, uh, the governor is trying to stereotype some uh, uh, SA. Yes, we, we understand your points and they're well noted. Uh, Mr. Uh, the, the SA, let's bring you in now if you can if you can hear us. Let's talk about Hello. the registration. You know, the governor has also said, you know, leave within seven days or if you want to continue operating in the forest, uh, you know, to for your cattle to graze, you need to register. Can you tell us about this registration? What's the process going to be like? Where are they going to register? How long is this registration going to take place? Just what are the logistics that have been put in place by the government of Ondo State to see this uh, registration uh, come to light? Uh, I think, uh, let me start from what, let me pick from what the last speaker said. That where the government went wrong is uh, banning or the the illegal occupant of uh, the the reserve forest. Okay, go ahead. I said, oh, let me put it straight. What the governor said is that if you are occupying that forest illegally, he is not saying that Nigeria you can occupy anywhere. Then you cannot occupy that place without a permit. We have our own indigenous farmer in the forest occupying the place. They are registered. And he is only saying that if you have cause to occupy the forest, come and register. When right. you register, you will be known. So, Mr. Dujimo, the question the now is, uh, sorry to interject, but the question now is, how are they supposed to register? Can you let us know the logistics that are being put in place for them to go and register to be allowed to graze, for their cattle to graze in the forest in Ondo State? 
are you saying how could they be registered? Yes. How? What's the process of the registration? Where no, would they the go to? Is it local governments? What's the process? Our minister of agriculture that registered all the farmers occupying the forest. They can still go through the process with the uh, minister of agriculture and to register themselves and to declare yourself, register yourself. That I wanted to do this. I wanted to do one or two business in the forest and disclose yourself. Not illegal occupation. Not just coming from nowhere, occupying their place, doing nothing there. Okay. The people uh, occupying their presently, who are, who, are, who, are, who are from this state, the farmers, eh, they are means, they are all farmers there. We can, they are located lands. They right. are officially right. given uh, uh, lands, and these people are, they are farming on those lands, but these people just come and just occupy, just lit up everywhere without doing anything in the forest. All right, Mr. Dojumbo, I, I want to. Here. I want to come in here. Um, I read, you know, a report yesterday also from a person called Baba Usman, the National Secretary of the Mietiala Cattle Breeders Association. And they are saying that they have no agreement with Governor Rat Rotimi Akiridulu to uh, vacate the forest um, in seven days. It says that uh, a series of agreements had, uh, reached, had been reached with the government, but it didn't um, you know, include vacating the forest. Um, are you aware of this, and how do you think that the government should respond to this? I if they are saying they have no agreement with uh, the governor to vacate the forest, I think it's a source of new order. It was yesterday the order came out. It's the vacation. I want us to get something clear from this issue of vacation. Okay. Come and register your... If you want to occupy our forest... Come and register. We want to know who's occupying our forest. What is what is what is the big deal about that? I don't think anything is wrong with that. If you have an authorial motive, you will be able to uh, come and register. Come out and register. That is what we are saying here. Okay. Well, once again, um, are you aware? Or do, in the meeting that you said that um, it was held, um, was the BAT ally involved in that meeting? The, Metella, the chairman of the Metella was present. That's uh, the, 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 state, the state chairman of uh, the state chairman of Metella. And most of the Metella chieftains are invited. The Alsa community are equally invited. The Bela communities are invited. So we are there, and we all agreed. Okay. Um, we're running, we're running short of time uh, on this segment. So I just want to uh, finally bring in uh, Mr. Osaji on this issue. I mean, social media is a buzz with this matter, and you know, a possibility people have been raising is that the headsmen might, you know, turn to attack uh, the community, saying, you know, they, they're Nigerians, they have a right to be, you know, to go anywhere they want to go. They have freedom of movement, and they might turn to begin to, you know, carry out attacks on the community. If this is a possibility. How should the government handle it, Mr. Osaji? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Osaji, Mr. Dojimo, kindly hold on. Hello, Mr. Dojimo, kindly hold on. Let's bring in Mr. Osaji for this one. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you, Mr. Osaji. Please go ahead. Oh, oh all right. Uh, you see, uh, that is the uh, essence of uh, having what we call forest guards. You know, uh, if the Ondo State Governor uh, will want to have uh, a very good secure. Uh, on those states, uh, should, uh, you know, enforce a maximum, uh, forest guards, uh, that will carry out the, uh, you know, surveillance of the forest. Because, like Mr. Jim rightly said, that, uh, the governor or the state government has asked, uh, uh, whoever is, uh, interested in, the, uh, staying in the forest should come and register. That is a form of tenancy. I agree with that. You register so that, uh, your distance will be captured, your presence will be captured, so that there will be ability for the state government to monitor your movement in and out of the forest. Should peradventure anything goes wrong or any uh, act of terrorism or kidnapping goes wrong, they'll be able to have a trace or have a track of whoever committed uh, such acts. For me, I think it's a welcome development uh, by the state governor. And I uh, will also want uh, those staying in the forest without uh, the consent of the state uh, to vacate the, the forest or else whatever goes wrong, uh, they'll be held accountable. And uh, the governor should also look at projecting surveillance activities in the forest because it's not about asking people to vacate the forest. What are the security mechanisms you're going to put in place 
to assure that crime does not take place. That is where uh, surveillance uh, activities uh, should be applied to All mitigate right. the threats. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, Dix, uh, Dixon Osage, thank you so much for stepping in and for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Thank Mr. Jim Odojumo, thank you also for taking our time to speak with us. Thank um, you, and I hope thank that you. we can bring you in again um, if there is uh, any development to this story and to clarify some of the things that we, we may have missed out uh, this, this morning. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have thank a great you. day. All right. Um, well, see, one question on my mind, Osarege, is these people have been asked to leave or register. How many of them are literate enough to register? How, okay, for example, now, the government is saying that they had, and Mr. Adujuma said, they had stakeholders of Yetala Allah in the meeting, but now they're saying they were not involved. So if this is where we stand, how do they get the appropriate information uh, across to the headsman that's in the forest right now? How do they get the information across to them for them to go and register? Now, if they're eventually forced to leave, which other states do they go? So there's so much issues. Like I think this is this is something that we need a national issue for it's because uh, there. I mean, I mean, there are cattle rarers everywhere. There are headsmen everywhere, and one state rejects them. They go to the next state. Whatever issue happens, they blame it on the headsmen. Maybe they did it. Maybe they did it. I don't know. But I feel that the government needs to, you know, really think about this issue and find a solution once and for all to this issue. I totally agree. Um, I also would say it's you know, high time that we once again start to talk about ranching yes. um, and stop having people just roam around the country with cattle looking for, you know, how to feed them. Um, whoever buys cattle should make arrangements for how they will be fed. Um, and and lastly, if you are an entrepreneur, I mean, this 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 is a huge opportunity uh, for agriculture. We've known this business. opportunity for. This is for something you can definitely this. invest in. I mean, we need we need solutions. We need tech innovative solutions right now in agriculture. You know, to help us you know tackle other issues like security as well. So yes, this is where we'll draw the curtain on this segment of the program. Our next guest is standing by to help us discuss issues with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Uh, you know, they just discovered you know, this huge stash of cocaine at the airport and what the new NDLEA executive chairman is saying about this. In just a moment, do stay with us.